This is a Sharp Mobilon HC4500, a Windows CE portable computer. I've been wanting a pocket-sized tiny computer for a while now, and this is the closest I've been able to find for a reasonable price. I would really like to get one of the Sony Vio pocket computers, but those things go for a lot of money secondhand. You may be wondering why I haven't shown it running yet. Well, the main battery has gone completely bad. It uses rechargeable nickel metal batteries instead of double A's. And if we look at the manual for this device, we'll see that if the main batteries are not installed or are depleted, the unit will not function even when connected to an AC power source. So this thing is dead right now. If we look at the battery, we can see there are holes in it that let us see inside, and we can take a look at the cells in the battery pack. And they just so happen to look an awful lot like rechargeable double A's. From here, it's pretty easy to see where I'm going with this. Another reason to believe I can replace the batteries in there is that these are a 1.2 volt cell, while the battery here is 2.4 volts with the two cells in series. Now the battery pack's definitely not meant to be serviced. There are no screws or easy tabs or any way of getting into this thing. So I'm going to have to try and manually pull it apart, and it's probably heat welded along some seams, and it's not likely going to come apart cleanly. So before I do this, I want to make sure that I know exactly what's going on in this thing. So I'm going to start by taking this apart so I can see where these contacts are going inside. Now one of the reasons I need to open this up before I replace the batteries is to determine the polarity of the contacts on the battery. This thing is so depleted that there is quite literally zero voltage going across it. And that's not just a short. There's nothing going on in there. So I need to be able to take this apart so I can figure out which contact is ground, which one is positive 2.4 volts, and which one is likely 1.2 volts in the middle of this so we can determine which cell is at what voltage. Now I'm not extremely familiar with this unit, but it looks like in order to get the case off, I'm going to have to remove what I believe is a memory expansion. It seems weird to upgrade the RAM on this. This could also be storage. When the unit loses power, it loses all data stored on it. So even if these are just RAM chips, I wouldn't necessarily believe that they're being used as RAM. All right, we have access. After looking this over, it's fairly obvious that this pin is ground because it immediately goes to this ground plane and you can test the continuity anywhere. But I do believe that this pin is for 2.4 volts. If we follow it immediately, it goes to this 5 amp fuse just like the power input does over here. That would mean that this pin is a 1.2 volt sense pin for the battery. Now I can't be 100% sure of that on this side because there's actually two layers of circuit board. You can see the other layer down in there. And I need to remove this screw and this screw to gain access, that screw, to gain access to the other side. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is clearly the business side of the circuit board and it does confirm my suspicions. This contact goes to somehow yet another 5 amp fuse, which would mean it has 10 amps total of current carrying capability. Strange. but. This side only has this one tiny little trace coming off of it, which would be perfect for a V-Sense. So, that will be 1.2 volts. Alright, I've got my aging analog power supply connected to the two terminals on the back, and set to 2.4 volts, so let's see what happens when we flip the switch, and try and turn it on. I'm getting current limit, it's trying to draw awful lot of power. This thing will try and draw all the way up to a half an amp, but the CSRs are set to five amps, so there's a chance that it could need more. So I'm gonna let it have a little bit more current and let's see what it does. Ah, something doesn't feel right there. I haven't seen any magic smoke though. How's this for hilarious? I plugged in a wildly over current rated power supply for this thing and it does run. So this says it needs so this thing says it needs 1.4 amps for the power supply. I have it connected to a 3 amp power supply and it will run. So it does work. So perhaps over battery it just needs to pull more power. My power supply is only 2 amps so I can't really supply that. So 
this thing probably works. Now you may be noticing some flicker in the LCD and that's probably because it's not quite getting enough current. So I think the next step is going to be to rebuild the battery pack. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now this thing really doesn't look all that easy to get into, but since the computer itself was built with a lot of plastic snaps, hopefully this was as well. So let's see how this goes. Well, thank you 10 minute recording limit for shutting off before I got this open. But what you need to know basically is that these are adhered to the batteries internally. So you kind of just have to pry them against the battery to get them off. So it's looking like we have two cells and these are considerably larger than double A's are. So it, replacing these isn't gonna be quite as easy as I thought. And these are spot welded um, on kind of like 18650s are typically used. After removing this red piece of paper, we see what's most likely the poly switch, which allows a temperature controlled cutoff in case the battery is overheating. I'm not quite sure what this metal piece is, but it's most likely part of the circuit for that. And suddenly all the new batteries are in there. Now the only safe way to attach metal contacts to batteries is to spot weld them, which is definitely what I did. So make sure you do it that way. I was able to reuse the thermal protection in here, which isn't a bad idea, because I'm not sure these are going to be able to handle as much current as the original ones. But that doesn't fit terribly well, because the AA's are longer than the original batteries were. So it kind of pushes it out. So it's going to take some finessing to fit this back with the top case on it. it took some work, but I don't think it looks half bad. It seems pretty factory. A little bulge there, but you know, if I can get away without gluing it back together, I'm definitely going to. All right, and now for the moment of truth. Well, it fit. Hey, sweet. Battery's working. Yeah, I found that this, this takes a lot of force to activate. Yeah, a whole lot of force. All right, I'm just gonna breeze through all this. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, finish. Boom! Window CE. This device features a 640 by 200 or 240, I can't quite remember, display. And what makes it unique is that it is color. Now it comes with a whole bunch of built-in software, which is really nice because I don't have the proprietary serial cable to go with this thing, and I don't have any other real way of putting data on it. The only other generic ports are this modem port here, and on the back, there is an IR port. So if I can't get those to do something, then, whoo, man, I'm not going to be able to do a lot with this thing. But it does have some stuff built in, so let's see what we can do built in. So if I launch Voice Recorder, let's see what happens if I record something. This is me talking right now. Uh, let's see how this sounds when I play it back. This is me talking right now. Uh, let's see how this sounds when I play it back. Wow, that was really terrible. Well, voice recorder was pretty disappointing, but I'm sure image editor is going to be a lot better. Oh, yeah. Definitely a lot more satisfying to use than that terrible voice recorder. Now, let's see. We have a brightness button, which... Seem to choose between dim and more dim. Let's see, we've got some quick launches, so let's try Pocket Word. Ah, oh, that was it. Okay. This, ooh, is a typing test. All right, I really like that it has number row. Now that I look at that, that's really convenient. Yeah, hey, this is, this is pretty nice. Uh, backlight. Hold the Alt key and press. Oh, okay. Oh, that's way better. Oh, that's nice. Hold the Alt key and press. Ooh, that's cool. 
That is fancy. That's really, that looks a lot better in person now. It just took maxing it out. <laughs> oh, th this thing's cool. All right, well, I accomplished what I wanted to today. I replaced the battery in this with something that actually works, and now it's a fully usable unit, which is really cool. Unfortunately, Windows CE does still suck, so it doesn't do a whole lot. And there's no real convenient way of getting data to and from this, aside from possibly IR. Maybe I'll be able to connect, get this to connect to my uh, 486 laptop over the IR port. That could be interesting. But Windows CE is just going to be kind of limited. So I might look into trying to get Linux on here. Now I did a little bit of preliminary research, and there is a Linux distribution made for the Sharp Mobileon series. But it's kind of, eh, it actually launches from within Windows CE, so it's going to take up space on there, and then Windows CE is going to be taking up even more space. So it wouldn't be ideal, but if I could get that working, and this thing actually has a PCMCIA card slot, uh, if I could get Wi-Fi working on here, this would be a great little portable terminal, just that I could hotspot to my phone and then be able to access my server. Boom, dedicated Linux machine. So I look forward to trying to get that working. But for now, that's everything I really wanted to cover with this, and hopefully we see this more in the future. I'll see you guys later.